Okay, let's look at uh, the sheet called Mole Problem Practice so that we can get a little bit better at converting from grams to moles and moles to grams and um, be a little faster at it through practice. So we have seen this before where one mole of any substance that has a formula um, equals the molar mass in grams of that substance, meaning if we measure out um, that many grams on a balance, we have one mole and we know that that sample we measured out would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms if it was an element or mole molecules if it was a compound. Any two of the values listed above, or in any equality really, can be used as a conversion factor. Conversion factor is a fraction where the top and the bottom numerator and denominator are equal to each other, which means it's equal to one. And then we take that and we multiply it times something given in a problem, 60 grams of NaOH, for example, and convert it to some other unit like moles. Okay, so let's take these equalities from the box up above and turn them into possible conversion factors we can use to solve a problem. So one mole equal, equals molar mass. Remember, molar mass is measured in grams. Um, so one mole over grams, or we can also flip it and use it in this version, grams over one mole. Um, one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, Avogadro's number. So we can use um, the format one mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, or we can use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules over one mole. And we'll abbreviate mole, M-O-L. Um, and so molar mass equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules also, because remember one mole and the number of grams from the periodic table um, are equal numbers, are equal amounts. Molar mass is an equal amount to that, and uh, that's a mole, and uh, yeah. So they're all equal. We can make conversion factors out of any of them. So molar mass would be in grams um, over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, or it, uh, we can flip it upside down to use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules over grams or molar mass. So based on what the problem asks us and gives us, um, we'll choose one of these conversion factors um, to help us solve the problem. So conversion factors are multiplied by the number given in the problem to convert units from what is given to what is asked for. And we're gonna call what's asked for the unknown. Use the form of the conversion factor that will cancel out the unit given in the problem and will leave the unit asked for, which is the unit of the unknown, in the answer. So it'll look like this. Well, it'll have a number with the unit given in the problem, and we're gonna multiply it times one of these conversion factors up here that looks like this. It has the unit that matches the one given in the problem on the bottom, and it has the unit that matches what's given, what's asked for in the problem on the top, and then we're gonna do the math to get the answer. So how many moles are in 60.0 grams of NaOH? So 60.0 grams of NaOH would be our given. We don't need to write the formula in the given for right now, but we will have to later. And it does matter when we find the molar mass, so we're gonna to have to at least keep track of where that is. Um, and the unknown would be moles. How many moles? That's what we don't know. So this is our given and this is our unknown. I'll just write UNK. All right, so first step, write what's given. 60.0 grams times, okay, we want the conversion factor that has grams in the bottom and moles in the top because we wanna cancel grams and get moles. That actually is this one right here. Um, but eventually, I mean, really you should just look at this write the unit um, on the bottom, write the unit that they're asking for on the top, and you really don't need to look up there to find something. Um, moles always has a one next to it, and grams will always have the molar mass from the periodic table. So Na's mass on the periodic table is 23, oxygen is 16, and H is one. Oops. So that's 40, so this is a 40. Okay, and doing the math, Remember that the, um, a fraction time anything, times anything is just multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators and dividing them. So 60 grams is the same as 60 grams over one. 
So you have 60 grams, 60.0 grams, times one mole, because these are all the numerators. The denominators would be one, I'm not gonna write that though, um, over and 40. So what happens now is that grams will cancel and you'll get 60 divided by 40 and moles will still be left in our answer. So 60 divided by 40 is 1.50. Oops, no, not times, just moles. 1.50 moles, right? And so it's just like an algebra. You can't leave this off if it doesn't cancel. You can't just um, make it disappear. Um, if this were a variable in an algebra problem, like an X or a Y, you couldn't leave it out of your answer if it didn't cancel out. So we can't leave off any units in chemistry um, if they don't cancel out. Okay, and letter B is gonna be the reverse here. So 1.50 moles, um, that's our given, and our unknown would be grams. So our given is 1.50 moles, and then we're gonna make a conversion factor, and the bottom, the denominator needs to match moles, the numerator needs to match what's um, unknown, grams, and it's just the upside down version of the one we used in A. One mole, and since we still have sodium hydroxide, it's 40 grams. So it's now 1.50 moles times 40 grams over one mole. And then remember that our moles will cancel and our grams will not. I'll just leave it that way. So it's 1.5 times 40, 60.0 grams. So these are the reverse problems, um, but the same problem, it's actually the same problem in reverse. 60 grams equals 1.5 moles, 1.5 moles equals 60 grams. And we used a conversion factor where the top equaled the bottom. And so we basically multiplied 60 grams times one to get another way to say the same amount. Okay, the next ones are going to use, the next problems are gonna use Avogadro's number because they're asking for molecules or giving molecules. So here is our given, write it first, 1.50 moles. And what we're searching for are molecules. Oops. Oh, I'm gonna follow the same format, cancel our units that we wrote down, and then molecules or molecs. Um, and then this should be, I'm gonna write this over again. I just need more space. Okay, what we're looking for, what we are given, and what we want to cancel. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Anytime you see the word atoms or molecules, this is the only number that can go next to it. The only number that can go next to moles would be 1. Okay, so we have 1.50 moles times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules divided by one mole. And once again, our moles will cancel, and it's 1.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So it's 1.5 times 6.02 E, oh, oh sorry. 1.5 times 6.02 EE23. 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd. 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd didn't cancel molecules. And that's what they're, what's what's asked in the question. Okay, and letter D says how many moles are in 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd molecules? So 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd molecules are given, so start with it. And then cancel molecules and get moles. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so we have 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd molecules times one mole divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And I just want to show you something. Um, of course, our molecules will cancel, but look uh, at our 10 to the 23rds. We have one in the top and one in the bottom, and it's a factor, so it can cancel. So we get <coughs> and you don't have to put parentheses around it, um, one thing on the bottom, but I just like to make it all look the same. So you get 9 divided by 6.02, which is 1.5 when it rounds off. And I'll box all these in so they're easy to find when my teacher grades them. Okay, so the same process backwards. We use one mole and 
6.02 times 10 to the 23rd in a conversion factor here and here only flipped upside down. And so now we have molar mass and Avogadro's number. So write what's given, 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd molecules times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules on the bottom. And now we need mass on the top. So we have to put G for grams because grams is measured, mass is measured in grams. And then um, the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, still 40. If we had a different formula, we'd have to find, uh, look it up in the periodic table again. So now we have 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd molecules times 40 grams over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules and our molecules cancel and our 10 to the 23rd cancels. And this time though, we have 90 times 40, excuse me, nine times 40 divided by six. And that's gonna turn out to be um, 59.8 grams. Um, so nine times 40 divided by 6.02, nine times 40 divided by 6.02, 59.8. Okay, and last but not least from the examples, um, given 60.0 grams, find molecules, cancel grams, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and 40 grams, and I'm not going to write it out anymore. It's 60 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 40, 60 times 6.02 EE23 divided by 40, and it's 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd. 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And notice all of ours, even this up here, should round to 60. So I used the same numbers for every problem, pretty much. And we didn't mark out this canceling, but you should be looking at the fact that they do. And we canceled these over here. Okay, so good news. We don't really need to use um, Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, um, pretty much ever again. Um, it was the purpose of learning about it was, the, was to learn what a mole really is and what it means. Um, but in real life, when we do a chemical reaction or when we measure something out to use in lab, we can't count actual numbers of particles. So we just measure out grams and we use... Um, we use chemical equations to help us know how much we need, and so those actually refer to moles. And the numbers in a, in, a, in a chemical equation refer to numbers of moles relative to other, each other um, reactants and products in the equation. So um, long story short, we don't need 6.02. We're going to do everything from now on like the first two problems. So the top five questions, number one through five, are all gonna be worked the same way because they all give moles and ask for mass or grams. Six through 10 all give grams and ask for moles, so it's the opposite process. So I'm gonna do the first one of each one and um, then the rest is for you to complete. Okay, so what's given? 1.0 moles. And we're gonna put moles on the bottom and get grams on the top. Um, one mole of KBr, now we need to look it up on the periodic table again. Uh, the mass of K on the periodic table is 39.1, and the mass of Br is 79.9. Um, and so that would be 119. And even if you rounded it to 39 and 80, it's still 119 grams. Okay, and guess what? Moles will cancel, and it's 1 times 119, and so it's 119 grams. And just a coincidence that they gave us one mole. Okay, and so all of number two through five will be worked the same way, only with different molar masses. Um, and number six is going the other direction. So write what's given, 86.84 grams of LIBR. And we're gonna cancel grams. Um, oh, and we haven't been writing formulas. We can write formulas um, but we haven't been, and we will in the future, though. But for right now, let's keep it simple. Um, we're going to cancel grams, and we want to get moles in our answer. So put that on the top. One mole equals the molar mass 
of LIBR. Li lithium is a uh, mass of 6.94, bromine is 79.9, .9, and that actually adds up perfectly to 86.84. What a coincidence. Probably not. Um, so not only do our grams cancel, our 86.84s cancel um, and get one mole. Okay, and so 7, 8, 9, and 10 all work the same way. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 also work the same way, but they're alternated. So, um, and, and the words read a little differently. The problems are worded differently. However, it's the same process. So for 11, um, it still has a given here and an unknown here. Um, this one, number 12, still has a given here and an unknown here. So we still use the same process. We just um, need to now be more careful about what we're doing and not just repeat for the sake of repeat. Okay, and so, um, and then number 16 has a typo, so I'll just leave that. Solution was made using 15.9 grams of CaNO3 taken twice. How many grams were used? Well, they give us grams and ask for grams, so 15.9 grams, of course, were used. Um, and then here are the answers. Um, and remember, you don't really get credit for the answers. You get credit for the process. Um, and it needs to look very, very much like what the process that I just showed you. Okay, but here are the answers so that you can check your work. Um, don't worry about this down here. This is something else I was showing someone. Okay, and so hopefully that was helpful. And um, when you come back, we'll check and see how much of this um, you figured out.